it's my pleasure now at this stage of the program to introduce uh, more formally our guest speaker, Alain Belmar. As many of you know, Alain was appointed President and Chief Executive Officer of Bombardier just about a year ago in February 2015. He also serves as a member of the Bombardier Board of Directors. Alain's long and distinguished career in aerospace began at United Technologies Pratt & Whitney Canada Division in 1996. Over the ensuing 20 years, Alain served in a number of leadership roles at UTC, including President of Pratt Canada, President of Hamilton Sunstrand, and Chief Executive Officer of UTC Propulsion and Aerospace Systems. That's where he had responsibility for both Pratt & Whitney and for UTAS, United Technologies Aerospace Systems. Alain also led UTC's successful acquisition a couple of years ago, uh, the acquisition and integration of Goodrich. He also had responsibility for the aerospace systems for the Boeing 787 airplane, the F-135 engine for the Joint Strike Fighter, and Pratt & Whitney's geared turbofan engine. Alain is an engineer by training, and like the Wings Club Foundation, he is a strong supporter of education. He's a member of the Faculty Advisory Board of McGill University's Desote Faculty of Management, and he also serves on the board of the, National, the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. Now, Bombardier is riding a high at the moment after some big wins at Air Canada and Delta. I'm sure Alain will talk about that and some other things going on in the company and in the industry. So please join me in welcoming Alain Belmar. Well, good afternoon, everybody. No, I, it's a pleasure to be here. I was just thinking, I mean, I'm look, I have this script here, it's full of secrets. Um, and then I was sitting next to Jean Rosan Vallon, Desso, and then I saw Mark Byrne, Gulfstream, so I'm changing the script. <laughs> so I'm not going to change, but it's, it's great to be here with you and great to see so many friends, real friends and customers and, and partners and competitors. And there. So, it's a small world. Not that long ago, I was working very closely with many, many of you, and now I'm competing with some of you. So it's a, you never know where, where life brings you. Uh, first, I would like to start today by recognizing and thanking the officer and members of the Wings Club for more than seven decades of supporting the aerospace industry. I also applaud the work that is done by Wings Club to encourage young people to pursue careers in, in aviation, making sure that we have a strong pipeline of talent and future leaders. I have a son uh, studying in engineering, so for me, it's something that, that is close to my heart. And like many parents in, in, uh, in this room, we understand what it means to have your son studying in, uh, in colleges, at colleges. So I know that we have a table here, we've mentioned that earlier, a table of students from Vaughan College. Um, a special welcome to you. I don't know where they're sitting. Uh, uh, they're in the back. You're way too far in the back. Make, make, make sure that you have your resumes ready and, and you just wait at the end there and you give it to people and it works. You know, at our annual shareholder meeting, I mean, there's like uh, during the Q&A period, there's a guy that just showed up, took the mic and said like, I have my resume with you, would you with me, would you hire me? And uh, we gave him an interview. I don't know if we're going to hire him, but you know, <laughs> it's pretty audacious. So that's, uh, I think that I would encourage to, to try it. <laughs> Again, my thanks to the Wings Club for, for supporting and providing opportunities to the next generation of aviation professional. You can continue to count on our support. My plan this afternoon is to give a brief overview of Bombardier and uh, talk about the turnaround plan that we're executing right now, share my thoughts on the long-term outlook of commercial aero market, and uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna talk about the C-Series. I'll think about this uh, as we go along. <laughs> Obviously, I will, big time. And uh, I will take a few questions. So starting uh, with Bombardier, we are an $18 billion business uh, we are a leading manufacturers of planes and trains. We operate in 28 countries around the world. We employ more than 65,000 people, uh, including more than 11,000 engineers. Um, we have uh, four business units. 
a business aircraft, commercial aircraft, aerostructured, and transportation. I will talk briefly about each of these segments in just a few minutes, but first I would like to give you some perspective on the company as a whole. Many of you know that I've joined Bombardier about like 15, 15 months ago now. At that time, the company was facing major challenges. The company took on too many development pro projects and would spread itself too thin to fulfill its ambitious goals. It was clear that some tough action would be required. At the same time, the company had tremendous potential. Bombardier was investing and developing game-changing aircraft, the C-Series and the Global 7000-8000. But to unleash the full potential of, this air, of these aircraft, Bombardier had to address its near-term challenges, and that's exactly what we are doing right now. So shortly after joining Bombardier, I launched a five-year turnaround plan with key specific goals, returning the company to profitable growth, leveraging these major investments that we were doing in new products to deliver superior value to customers and to shareholders, and at the same time ensure our long-term competitive position. Our turnaround plan has three phases to it, de-risking the business, rebuilding earnings power and free cash flow performance, and deleveraging our balance sheet. Last year, our focus was on de-risking and stabilizing the business, and we made huge progress. We secured $5.6 billion in additional liquidity, the right level to execute our turnaround plan and to make sure that we were going to move forward with our C-Series and Global 7 development programs. Most importantly, over the last year, we assembled a world-class team, a team with deep industry knowledge turnaround experience, and a track record of delivering value to customers and shareholders. And today, we have a very strong leadership team, and including Fred Cromer, Colin Ball, Peter Von Casellos, who are here with me. So thank you guys for, for doing what you're doing every day. Um, this is, um, let me, we, this, this is a team uh, that I spent a lot of time rebuilding. Uh, we have some here in the room, but we've changed 80% of the leadership team at Bombardier. And I tell you, a business is all about the people and the leaders that you have, and they're making a big difference. We, have, we work well to get together, we complement each other very nicely, and we're all focused on executing programs, driving operational efficiencies, reducing costs, and delighting customers. And while we still have a lot of work to do, I am very pleased with the progress that we've made so far. Looking ahead, our five-year goal is to grow revenue to more than $25 billion while expanding margins. 2016 is a year of transition, and so far, we're tracking on plan. So let me now give you a quick look at our business segment. Starting with Bombardier Transportation, our rail business, since we're just a few hundred yards away from Grand, Cent Grand Central. While most of you know Bombardier as a lead lead leading commercial and business aircraft manufacturer, we're also a global leader in rail technology with over 100,000 rail cars and locomotives around the world. With revenues of $9 billion, we are a market leader with the broadest portfolio of products and services in the industry. Our portfolio includes light rail systems, metros, commuters, locomotives, and high-speed train. Our products can be found across New York metro region, including 1,800 subway cars right here in Manhattan, and another 1,000 units on the Long Island and Metro North rail lines we also provide Amtrak and Acela trains and the air train system and at the GFK and Newark airports. Similar to our aero business, the long-term growth potential of the rail business is very strong and it's largely driven by some mega trends, urbanization, 
a growing middle class, and also the need to connect people more efficiently. The New York City area is also an important region for bombarded business aircraft. Over the past years, Teterboro has led the country for departure and arrivals for charter, fractional, and general flight and general aviation flights. In the near term, the business jet market continues to look challenging, especially in emerging markets, and this is why we took our production rates down last year. Longer term, we see strong growth potential, and our 10-year delivery forecast predicts roughly 9,000 business aircraft valued at almost $300 billion. And of course, the biggest driver of that growth will be GDP and corporate, earning pro corporate earnings growth. At Bombardier, we have the best business aircraft franchise in the world. So I'm sorry, Mark, and sorry, Jean. <laughs> and I have, I, I really hope that you're gonna win this. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me that Jean cannot, because he, can, he has to put his card, and he, he's not allowed, but uh, I'll, I just put one for you. So, <laughs> uh, so we, see, we, we see strong growth ahead with all the new products that we have, and we target revenues of $10 billion by 2020. The Global and Challenger are best-in-class products, and the new Global 7000 Will, which will make its first flight later this year, will be the best ultra-long range aircraft in the world. We call the Global 7000 the complete solution. It combines Mach.925 max speed with the largest cabin, unmatched passenger experience, latest engine technology, and the best low speed and steep approach capabilities. And like the C-Series, we expect the Global 7000 to be a game changer. Now turning to commercial aerospace, overall I'm pretty optimistic about the outlook for the industry. And while the global economy looks pretty challenging right now, uh, especially in emerging markets, long term, the growth opportunities look very strong and I expect RPMs to continue to grow faster than worldwide GDP. Bombardier commercial aircraft portfolio in Q include the Q400, the CRJ, and of course the all new C Series. The Q400 turboprop is a very good aircraft. In fact, it's the best performing aircraft in its class. And there's really an opportunity with the Q400 here. It's an opportunity to improve our cost structure and to regain market share, and the team is working on it. On the regional jets, prior to the C Series, the best example of Bombardier being at the forefront of aerospace innovation was the creation of the regional jet market with the CRG back in the mid-1990s. This program has been a huge success, and to date we have delivered more than 1,800 regional jets. So when you think about the regional jet market, it's important to remember how the market evolved and has grown since the mid-1990s. Mid it started as a 50-seat class market, growing to 70-seat class, and then to 90-seat 90 90 seat platform. This upgaging reflects the strong RPM growth that we've seen over the past 20 years, as well as airline migrating more routes to regional jets. With the CRG program, Bombardier saw these trends. Bombardier recognized that the regional jet market would continue to evolve and upgage, creating a strong market for the 100 to, 100 to the 150 seat class segment, a space that was not really being addressed efficiently by anyone until the C series. We project that the market size for this aircraft, the 100 to 150 seat class, is about 7,000 aircraft over the next 20 years. And again, the C series has been specifically designed for this market. So where are we with this game changing aircraft? First of all, the program is on schedule. The C series will enter serv commercial service on July 15 with Suisse. The route is Zurich to Paris 
and the flight is completely sold out. So if you want tickets, you can ask Fred. I think that he's got five in his pockets. Second, we are very confident that the C-Series will exceed all of its performance and reliability target. We are right now totally committed to delivering an amazing experience to customer. We have the right plan in place, we have the right resources in place, and the right team in place to ensure a flawless entry into service. Third, with the certification of the aircraft now done and entry into service approaching, we are seeing good momentum and strong campaign activity. Fred, Colin, and the team are very busy right now. And finally, winning the Delta order really changed the game. It validated the value that the C-Series would provide to customers, the lowest operating cost, the greatest cabin comfort, and the most environmentally friendly aircraft in its class. Bottom line, the C-Series is just a superb aircraft, the best performing aircraft in the 100 to 150 seat class. We now have a marquee customer list, Swift, Swiss Lufthansa, Air Canada, Korean Air, and Delta. So we have strong momentum. I would like to close my remarks today with a few words about something that is at the core of Bombardier and at also at the core of our industry. That is our commitment to innovation. Some of you may not know that Bombardier was founded in a small repair shop in Quebec by Joseph Armand Bombardier. His invention, the snowmobile, was born out of necessity. It created faster transportation so that life-saving medical care could be provided despite the harsh condition that we, see, we have in winter in Quebec. And since then, a commitment to innovation a drive for progress, a willingness to make bold moves have allowed the company to become a global leader in aerospace and rail transportation. I joined Bombardier 15 months ago because I believe in its future and I believe in its commitment to innovation. The type of innovation that we do in our industry involves large, complex engineering projects over a very long period of time and it requires courage, passion, and discipline. And because these investments are large, innovation is not without risk. I think that everyone here in the room would agree with me that innovation has been a key driver of growth in our industry since its inception, and that the future opportunities for innovation in aerospace are truly limitless. This is obvious when you look at the advancement over the past few decades. Advancement like the retractable landing gear, the air-cooled radio engines, gas turbine engines, cabin pressurizations, better avionics, composite, fly-by-wire, just to name a few. And while our industry does a great job recognizing achievements in aerospace with trophies, awards, and banquets, I believe that we can do much better in terms of supporting companies while they are taking the risk necessary to drive innovation. It is the great, great paradox of our industry. We all recognize that innovation does not come without risk. We all know that our industry would never advance beyond its current state if we were not willing to take risk, and of course, when we do take risk, setbacks do happen to us and to everyone in the industry. And yet, these setbacks are rarely characterized as evidence of a company pushing the envelope to provide the maximum value. Look at the GTF engine. When Pratt launched the GTF, there were many skeptics, people worrying about the gearbox. I know, would it be reliable? Would it be too heavy? But Pratt saw the potential. They believe in the technology, and they had the courage to develop it. And today, we are glad they did. The engine is playing a big role on the C-Series in terms of better noise, fuel burn, and emission performance. 
Another great example, skepticism about the feasibility of the CRG was widespread when we launched the program. In the end, the CRG became a huge success and has allowed airlines to better serve customers. As an industry, we should be more vocal in applauding companies that are willing to take risks, to push the industry forward. History has shown us that in most, ca most cases, when aircraft manufactured or engine manufactured push the, push the technology envelope, everyone, passengers, airlines, and the environment, all see tremendous benefits. And this is the case with the C-Series. I am confident that when the history on the C-Series is written, our past issue will be largely forgotten. People will, will recognize it as a big, bold move and as a game-changing aircraft. People will remember that we correctly predicted the strong market demand for 100 to 150 seat class aircraft, that we correctly decided that the market would be best served by a brand new clean sheet aircraft, and that our approach resulted in a superior product, a real step change. And finally, as the benefits of the C-Series became clear, the industry needed to respond with their own upgraded, upgraded products, which has driven the entire industry forward, resulting in more options for airline, a better experience for passengers, and a much lower impact on the environment. So as you can see, I am very confident in the future of the C-Series. So in conclusion, Bombardier is a great company, a global leader in trains and planes with super products and technology. We have been through a pretty rough patch, uh, but we have turned the corner. We have a well-defined five-year turnaround plan and a great team to execute it. We will soon unleash the full value of our investment in the C-Series and the Global 7000 as they entered into service. So I am very proud of what we've done over the past 12 months, and I know that we still have a lot more work to do. But I am confident in our ability to keep creating value for customers and for shareholders, and I'm very optimistic about our future. On this, I want to thank you for being here today, for taking the time, and I will take a few questions. Okay, what questions do we have out there? Thanks, Elaine. Uh, Joe Zanardi from Stiefel. Uh, you characterize the business jet market as somewhat challenging, particularly in emerging markets. I think Gulfstream has talked about it a little bit more positively. So can you, can you talk about whether some of the delays you've had on G7000 have led you guys to lose some market share, or whether there's just a difference between small cabin and large cabin? And over the past six months, have demand trends gotten better or worse? My God, you've got about like five questions in there. <laughs> we can spend the afternoon together if you want. But you should ask Mark Burns right here in the room, so maybe he sees things that I don't see. <laughs> Who are you, Mark? <laughs> so I, I think that uh, the market like, uh, has been pretty rough uh, for the, the large cabin over the past year or so. And it's largely driven, in our case, by like, softness in, in Russia, Middle East, and China. And I think that our competitors, I'm not going to talk for them, you can ask them, but I'm sure they're seeing kind of the same thing. The US market is pretty good. No, but like everywhere, everywhere else around the world is pretty challenging. On the 7,000, uh, which is actually in, in development right now, so it's not in production, we've announced a two-year delay. Uh, we have a pretty strong backlog. Uh, people were concerned that we would lose uh, a lot of customers, and we did it. So, I mean, we're still in pretty good shape right there, and the air aircraft will come into service at the end of 2018. Another question at the same table. Hi, uh, Mike Durgin, uh, uh, Stern AGCRT. Um, I, was, I was just wondering, uh, Republic Airlines has an order for 40 CS300s. I, I was wondering whether or not the Delta order 
has replaced the Republic order, or, or is that still uh, part of the Republican order, order uh, part of the order book? Uh, the, uh, thanks for the question. The, the, the Republic order is still in the backlog, but it's not in the skyline. So we'll see where it goes. I mean, right now we're still working with them, but, so the team is close to them. I mean, I wouldn't see the Delta order as replaced and the Republic. I wouldn't see it, see it this way. It's more like the fact that we have 370 70 aircraft in the backlog right now, and we were targeting 300 at entering to service. So, I mean, if you take a few aircraft because out of that backlog because of softness or for whatever reason, we, are, we, will, we will still be in a very good, solid position. So, and we have a very strong uh, uh, potential uh, with the options and uh, letter of intent that, that we have so that we can eventually convert. So I don't see that as one replacing the other. I see the Delta order validating the credibility and the performance of the C-Series. And this is giving us tremendous momentum right now. And I'm very pleased with the quality of the backlog. I did mention it, and I'm going to mention that again. And we, we didn't get all the credit when we won the Air Canada deal, because people thought that was like a national play, you know? Uh, many of you here in the room know Air Canada, and you, you know that the team would not ma make a compromise on selecting an aircraft that doesn't fit their, their mission uh, profile or their mission needs. So, but when we got Delta in, it all of a sudden, we started also to get credibility for, uh, for Air Canada. So, big deal this year. Air Canada, Delta, strengthening the backlog, good, uh, good quality marquee customers. And I see some here in the room, and one is sitting at my table. And, uh, and, and hopefully, we can get some more. <laughs> Anyone else? One of our students? Hi, I'm Otha. Nice to meet you. Um, thank you for the advice earlier, but as a young college student, I would like to know, is there any more advice that you have for us and, and things that you've used to become successful in the industry? Oh, that's a good question. It's a tough question. Everybody here in the room has an opinion on, on this. I, I would say it start with your commitment to education. Uh, your, your willingness to learn. It's continuous learning. Uh, I think that you're very fortunate to be sur surrounded with people in this, in this room who are learning all the time. And that's the beauty of aero, aerospace. That's, that's the beauty of, 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 uh, of aviation. I mean, we keep evolving all the time. So I think that you are starting at a very good place. Uh, your commitment uh, to be successful is very critical because I mean, you all, I mean, it's, going, it's not going to be a straight line. I mean, there will be some periods that are probably be going to be a little bit more challenging. Don't give up. Keep going. Uh, try to get some experience that are relevant to your field of interest. So that if you can get summer jobs that, that will bring you to a better place, I mean, you should look at this. Uh, if you want to push the envelope forward, you're going to need to work hard. I mean, there's nothing in this world that is, that is easy. I mean, you have to work for it. So I, I would just encourage you to keep going at it. OK, I think we're good on questions. Alain, thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of the Wings Club.